Hello everyone and welcome back to another Scratch tutorial. Today we're going to learn about one of the most widely used blocks in games, sensing blocks. Want to jump in? I think you got it. So let's jump right in. Woo! Okay. Can you guys see? Great. So. So these are the sensing blocks. If you guys don't, are not familiar with the sensing blocks, these over here are the sensing blocks. All of these over here are the sensing blocks. If you guys aren't familiar. And they're also the light blue category in the scratch category block. So before we start blocks, we have to understand what sensing really is. So. Let's say you have two sprites. One is this triangle sprite, and one is this circle sprite. And the circle is trying to catch the triangle. And when it hits the triangle, they both will collide. And there's a block that will let, so when they both collide, it will send something, Scratch will send something. And it will do a trigger based on if they collide or if they don't collide. So this is an example. So, what even is sensing? Sensing, as the word says, it's like if each other is touching, like sense. It senses if it's touching. So let's say we have one. Um, let's say we have one, one, one thing, and then there's another thing. And if they collide, that's sensing, like touching each other. See, could be two sprites touching each other, a mouse pointer touching the sprite, uh, the the sprite touching the edge lots of stuff right okay so you guys want to get jumped in i think you guys do so let me just say just uh, there we go okay can you guys see my face great okay so guys are you ready but let's see what the first sensing block is it is the touching mouse pointer block so another very commonly used block there. Yep. The touching mouse pointer block. Let's first see what this block does. So this block senses if it's touching something. So if there's one sprite and there's another sprite, if they touch each other, they it will an action will happen. So if they touch each other, something will happen. Is the purpose of it is a block. I'll show you an example for you guys to understand it more. What we'll need to do is get the when green flag click block. Oops. Okay, the when green flag click block. And then the touching mouse pointer block. We'll need to get the if then block, which we learned last week. And then we'll need the forever loop block. And what do you guys want it to do? Let's see, move 10 steps. And then, I think it should work now. If we touch it, it's gonna move 10 steps, look at that. We can control our sprite. Woohoo, let's move it back, oops. It's a bit too far. Let's move it way back here. And now we're gonna touch it, ooh, that's good. Ooh, ooh we're dragging it forward, wow, wow, wow. Isn't that so, so cool? Right? So look, let's show you again. I'll bring the sprite. Oops, it's way back here. Wait, let me bring it back here. Look, look how cool this is. Whoa, it's following my mouse. This is so cool, right, guys? And you do notice, guys, there's a drop down, which shows edge, too. You want to try that out? Let's bring this guy back here, and we'll put him right there. It's going to do something. It's just going to move 10 steps. So let's see, let me change this to negative 10, so it'll move backwards. Give me one minute, okay. Are you ready, guys? It moved back. Look at that, you see? Power of coding. Okay, so do you guys want to go into the next block? Sure you guys do. Okay, 
so the next block we have here, which we'll have to do to create a new sprite, which doesn't work, touching color green. Or it doesn't have to be green, it can be any other color. Like we can choose let's say dark blue or scratch is very convenient. We can go around the stage and looking for colors of sprites. We can do lots of stuff. So let me just move this thing here. We can grab ourselves a, let's see, a ball. Okay. Let me move myself down there again. Okay, you can see me twice and big now. Okay. So now we have the ball here. Next, we're going to go back to the sprite, get our touching color block, and we're going to navigate the screen since we don't know the exact color. So if you click on the color and want to change it, and you click on it, and there's a cool tool down here, which is known as the color navigator. You can navigate the stage for color, so like the cat's color, every inch of the stage. Most of it's white, but look at this. Now we get orange, the normal color of the ball. Okay, let's get that. And now with the color picker, guess what? Now with the color picker, it will, we got the same color as the ball there, right? So let me show you what would happen. We have to have this right there. And three, two, one, go. It moved back. Did you see that? Wow, look at this. It keeps on moving back. See, look, let me show you my code. If it's touching the certain color, which is the color of the ball, it's gonna move negative 10 steps, which means neg minus 10 steps backward. You guys understand this? Great. So, next one is a pretty fun block. It's, if this color is touching that color. So, let's say the cat's color is touching the ball's color, it'll do something. So let me show you a bit easier and a bit of an example. Let me get this if then block. Put that in. Let's see what you guys want to do. Okay, well, let me just um to say my get a new sprite. I think it will look better with the another ball for a friend with the other ball. There we go. And this is a very convenient trick you can do with Scratch. I just take your code here and just put it in another sprite like that, and it most of the time gets imported. Sometimes it doesn't, but you have to get it when it shakes most. Mostly, it's good. I got it. See, there's like a green dot around it. Now that we got it there, we can just delete the cat sprite. Now we have two balls. And we can change the color of one of the balls. So let's go here to my costumes. Ooh, let's see. I think we'll get this ball. And the other ball, we'll get another color. Costumes, how about we give it green? Are you guys ready to see what will happen? So we have to first get the um, colors of both of the sprites. That one we got. And then we have to get this color. Ready? Boom, there we go. Basically what we're doing, we're telling the sprite, if this certain color is touching that other color, it will change its his self color effect by 100. So let me show you. If this guy touching this guy, it changed. Look at that. So the next block we have is distance towards mouse pointer block. So guess what this block does? It's only mostly used in operators and we haven't gone over operators, but we can have some fun without operators. So if we just click on this block, it says this is how much the ball is away from my mouse pointer. So let me just move that. And let's see, um, we can also try how much it's away from the other ball. So ooh, we can do like that and they're very close to away. They're 12 away, 12 and some decimals. But if we put the exact number, like this one's minus 44, minus 40, if we do that, exact number, minus 44, minus 40, they'll be at the same place and it will say zero. So that's what this ball, it's like used for track where, how far they are from each other. So guys, before we go, we're, we're gonna do one game that I think you guys will like. I'm trying to do a very simple game for you guys to understand the sensing blocks. 
So what we'll need is a when green flag click box. So what the game does is that one ball will keep on moving while we have our ball which we can control and we have to try catching the other ball. How we do that? We first need to cat get the when green flag click block from the event section. Next, the if then next we have to get the repeat until block from the control section. With that, we also need to get the touching um, ball block. Um, so touching mouse pointer, it should say. But we can click the drop down, get touching ball in my case, because they're named ball. And we can do once it touches the ball, it will. Um, we can put out the end. It will say. Um. Oh, okay. Game over. You win. Woohoo! Okay, you win. And then, so we'll have to. I accidentally put in the wrong sprite, so silly RBJ. I have to put it in this green sprite. So we can put this in the green sprite. And we got it there. We don't need this one. But yeah. And it's going to keep on, in the green sprite, it's going to move to a random position. Or we could say, move to a random position. Yeah. And then every time it moves to the random position once, it's going to wait one second. But for the controlling, for us to control our sprite, we're going to get the one green flag click block, which we already have here, I just realized. We'll have to get the forever loop and see glide one second to um um we can click the drop down and get mouse pointer and we'll change that to point zero one okay so then let's see now the other ball oops what's happening wait now one sec oops guys we put seconds to ball so seconds to mouse pointer actually so look now this ball is moving to random position we have to get it and I think I made another typo. So another, um, yep, yeah, touching ball. We have to get ball two. Now it should work now, look. And game over. See, we can change, also change the difficulty by saying wait point zero point zero point two zero. Let's see. Now, oh, wow, this is hard. Oh man, let's go catch, catch, catch. Oh man, let's go catch, catch. Ah, oh, yes, we won. And if you guys want it to be even more cooler, you can add your own backdrop. So let's say I want this cool backdrop, a blue sky backdrop. And now the game will happen in the arena and boom, this is gonna be fun. Well, let's catch it. Ah, uh, yeah. You see the game, it's very fun and very um, hard actually. So let me explain the code. You see I did, when the flag is clicked, it's gonna see when the flag is clicked, it's going to keep on doing this until this event happens. So it's gonna keep on repeating, go to this random position and wait 0.20 seconds until touching the ball. So when it touches the ball, this loop here stops running. And it will say the next thing, game over, you win. And this thing, then the blue ball um, moves wherever um, our mouse is, see? The blue ball's following our mouse. It's like we're dragging the blue ball. So we can move our blue ball like however we want, you see? And it moves to the mouse pointer. So that's how I controlled my sprite and that's how the um, main code works with the sensing. Here we used conditionals, loops, sensing, and a few motion blocks. It's a very simple example for you guys to understand something. So with that said, you guys have a great day. Um, please subscribe and like my channel if you um, haven't. And please keep on coding, keep on having fun coding. And we're going to um, be back for the next scratch tutorial. In the next one, we're going to do all these blocks, okay? You see all of those. Next time, we're going to do those. And ready, guys? Bye. Scratch rocks. Bye.